Day X is here. Um, that's not that exciting because this is his last chance. He's been sitting on pins and needles. Uh, and it's just, uh, you know, they've been outside the courtroom. Some friends of ours, Gordon Dimmick was down there. Amber King from Run Media. Russell uh, Dobular from Due Dissidence. A lot of people been hanging out. Uh, Mick Wallace uh, from the EU uh, Parliament. He's a representative from Ireland. Uh, Claire Daly was there as well. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn. So many people were outside that courtroom uh, demanding they free Julian Assange. Uh, I think the only place he could go uh, and have uh, freedom and, and be safe from anybody picking him up is a place like Russia, maybe China. I don't know. But that's about it. I don't know if there's anywhere for this guy to go because I wouldn't trust him to go back to Australia. They said the, they would welcome him with open arms right now and pardon him. But Australia will always do what the United States and the Five Eyes country want them to do. So Julian would not be safe there. Um, let's get to it, Jamie. What do we got next here? Stella. Check out this video. If Julian is extradited to the United States, he faces an effective death sentence. He faces 175 years. He is being put on trial under the Espionage Act, but for doing journalism, the most important journalism there could possibly be, exposing the truth about practices of torture, war crimes, civilian killings, assassination squads in Iraq and Afghanistan. The United States has also been illegally spying on his legal meetings with his lawyers and even plotted to assassinate Julian. So obviously, Julian will never face a fair trial in the United States, and he should never be sent to the country that plotted to kill him. You know, Tati, I got to ask you right away. I mean, I know that you're more of a libertarian, right? But you're an independent thinker. Uh, I don't think you play team sports at all, too, as well. That doesn't mean just because you might be classified somewhat of a libertarian anarchist. I don't know where you're at. I know you're a a Bitcoin advocate of sorts, and you write some beautiful Bitcoin songs, and you're obviously an anti-imperialist. That's where we met at the Rage Against the War Machine. But Donald Trump, you know, a lot of his supporters, when I ask them what is the biggest criticism when it comes to uh, Donald Trump, they'll say Julian Assange. I'm going on OAN tomorrow to talk about Julian Assange, and that is predominantly a Trump channel. Would you agree that Donald Trump's biggest fault or mistake was the fact that he didn't pardon Julian Assange? Oh, there were a few mistakes. Um, I think <laughs> that um, his his COVID vaccine pushing was probably worse for mankind. Um, although I guess that was a similar push across the board, like globally. Um, but yes, the Assange, the lack of a pardon for I thought he should have pardoned or commuted the sentence of Assange, uh, Ulbricht, and Snowden. Uh, at the very least. And then he ended up forgiving uh, Lil Wayne, which of course was an important part of his uh, of his uh, presidential <laughs> pardon list. Yeah. And when I think of Lil Wayne, just a little side note, Lil Wayne had a, had a line and it was, um, I beat a pussy up like it's Emmett Till. And uh, if anybody doesn't know the story of Emmett Till, they should look it up. It's one of the most horrific stories. So to me, that guy's got to be the biggest piece of garbage out of all the hip hop people because it's just such an awful story and he is in a position of power and to speak about having sex with women in such a vulgar way, but also like, you know, uh, likening it to such a br brutal killing of a little kid, uh, I just feel like is disgusting. So I would not have pardoned Lil Wayne. Uh, Assange was probably, you know, what, like Trump was like, I love WikiLeaks. I mean, how can anybody take him seriously? I'm sorry, look. I'll take Trumpy over Biden any day. They're the only two candidates in our selections. I don't even believe in this nonsense. Fine, I'll go with Trump. But he should have pardoned Assange from the very beginning, even more so than those other people. Assange, because WikiLeaks really helped him win uh, the election by releasing some of uh, those files. So, I mean, I'm just not that excited about these people. No, I, I agree, too, as well, you know, and hearing people talk about it, uh, about him being a free speech warrior, like, no, he's not. I mean, let's not forget that when it came to the, the Chelsea Manning situation, he revived that whole court case. She had to go back to prison, right, and withholding whatnot, uh, because when Donald Trump got in there, and Donald Trump also was hoodwinked by, you know, Pompeo to try and whack 
Julian Assange. There was literally a plan to assassinate him during Donald Trump's presidency. So I don't want to hear that he's a freedom of speech warrior and all that other jive. It's just it's it's malarkey. Uh, and it is definitely one of his biggest faults. But you're right. You know, the vaccine situation that also comes to mind. But uh, there are people who say that he was going to pardon Julian Assange. But at the very end, when he was going to make that that a pardon towards the end of his presidency, he there was rumors, Tati, that the Senate, including uh, Mitch McConnell, the turtle, said if he does uh, pardon Julian Assange, they would impeach him for sure. And that he would never be able to run for presidency for the presidency again. And they kind of, kind of, that's what the the Trump fans say. It's all speculation. Well, but, there's uh, nothing but know. a pile of excuses uh, with these people. There's no accountability. Look, I get it. Maybe he couldn't do it. Blah blah. But I, I'm sorry. I thought you were supposed to be so tough. Oh, I'm gonna drain the swamp. I'm gonna do all this stuff. He didn't do anything. So I don't think he's so great. Yes, the economy was better, but guess what? The president isn't there to help the economy in the first place. And crediting him with it is idiotic. The the sanctions with um uh with um China were not a good idea. I mean, whatever. I don't want to get into whole big Trump thing. He's still better. Uh, there's some things that I admire about his inability to you know fall down and and just stay down. There's there's some good things there. Um, but and I also think that there's some good people behind him. But at the end of the day, like I'm not looking to a president to save my life, and uh, and I think that the sooner that people are are less dependent on these saviors uh, from government, the better. Um, because I just don't think that anybody's particularly satisfactory uh, that's running ever. Spoken like a true libertarian. What do we have on next over here? What is at stake? Let's read this again right now. I want you guys to see this really quickly. Uh, what is that state? The U.S. government is attempting to use the 1917 Espionage Act uh, against a journalist and a publisher for the very first time. Assange is not a U.S. citizen, and his publications occurred in the United Kingdom. If the U.S. is, is successful, it will have redefined investigative journalism as espionage. That's the importance when we say you are all, we are all Assange. It will have extended its judicial reach uh, internationally and applied to a non-U.S. citizen without a corresponding extension of the First Amendment rights. Prosecutors maintain does not apply to Mr. Assange as a non-U.S. citizen publishing from the U.K. This will pose an existential threat to the free press and other countries will be able to argue that they, too, should be allowed to extradite journalists and publishers from the United Kingdom for breaking their censorship or secrecy. I do want to point out that um, this time we will see people. And I remember remember the Rage Against the War Machine rally, Tati. There was a bunch of people who could not participate or would not participate because there were libertarians involved. Leftist people I know from Code Pink and whatnot would not speak because they refused to, uh, to get together with people from the Mises Caucus. Well, I'm glad that Thomas Massey led the way and there was a coalition of sorts. Now, I'm interested to see what you have to say. I'm going to read the letter real quickly, but I'm interested to see what you would say because there's a lot of people who said, you know, it's a little bit too late. You showed up to the party too late. It's already, you know, lights out and now you show up. This is Thomas Massey, hashtag free Hassan. Representative, Rep uh, Representative Mr. Uh, McGovern and I, along with 13 other representatives and Senator Rand Paul, sent a bipartisan letter to President Biden urging him to drop the prosecution of Julian Assange. Dear Mr. President, as members of Congress deeply committed to the principles of free speech and freedom of the press, we write to strongly encourage your administration to withdraw the U.S. extradition request currently pending against Australian publisher Julian Assange and halt all prosecute prosecutorial thank you proceedings against him as soon as possible. Mr. Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, faces multiple charges under the Espionage Act due to his role in publishing classified documents about the U.S. State Department, Guantanamo, and wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. You know that he also published the prisoners that were at Guantanamo Bay. I'm sure that a lot of people who had family members in Guantanamo Bay were able to push back because of Julian Assange's work. People who were unjustly jailed in prison by the United States government 
or the military industrial complex, the military, were able to push back because Julian Assange published their names. He was their only lifeline. That's why it's so just crazy seeing him sit in jail right now. Uh, he has been detained and remanded uh, in London since 2019 and is pending extradition to the U.S., having lost his appeal of the extradition order in the courts of the United Kingdom. Concerns about this case have been repeatedly expressed by international media outlets, human rights and press freedom advocates, and members of Congress, among others. To cite only a few of the commentaries in November 2022, the New York Times, The Guardian, Le Mans, Der Spiegel, El Pais came together to express the grave concerns about the continued prosecution of Julian Assange for obtaining and publishing classified materials, arguing that publishing is not a crime. In December 2022, a coalition of press freedom, civil liberties, and international human rights organizations wrote to Attorney General Merrick Garland, urging him to correct court and abandon the relentless pursuit of Mr. Assange in order to protect the ability of journal to report freely on the United States without fear of retribution. Like the fourth estate or the fourth estate, whatever you want to call it, what the press is supposed to do to hold the governments accountable. That's why it was created in the first place. Now it's just thrown out the window. And that's the whole thing. They don't want you knowing what they're doing. They don't want you knowing diddly squat. That's what this is about. They're not going after Julian Assange. They're going after all of us. They're just using Assange to get to us. U.S. elected officials have previously called on the administration to drop the charges against Mr. Assange, including in April of this year when members of the House argued that every day that the prosecution of Julian Assange continues is another day that our own government needlessly undermines our own morale authority abroad and rolls back the freedom of the press on the First Amendment at home, like his father said. We believe the Department of Justice acted correctly in 2013 during your vice presidency when it declined to pursue charges against Mr. Assange for publishing the classified documents because it recognized that the prosecution would set a dangerous precedent. It's still like what Tatiana said before, the way Donald Trump used it to his advantage. WikiLeaks! I love WikiLeaks! All campaign trend, WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks. It was okay to praise WikiLeaks and Julian Assange when he used it to your benefit, just like uh, Barack Obama did, because it was George Bush and the Republicans' war. It was all about collateral murder because it benefited them. But as soon as it doesn't benefit them and their overlords, their donors, and their military warlords tell them what they have to do, Oh, they get in place and they get in line really quickly, don't they? We note that the 1917 Espionage Act was ostensibly intended to punish and imprison government employees and contractors for providing or selling state secrets to enemy governments, not punish journalists or whistleblowers for attempting to inform the public about serious issues that some U.S. government officials might prefer to keep secret. Shh. We are aware that the Assange case has been cited by officials of the People's Republic of China to claim that the United States is hypocritical when it comes to uh, its purported support for media freedom. We are also well aware that should the United States extradition and our persecution go forward, there is significant risk that our bilateral relationship with Australia will be badly damaged. It is, our, it is the duty of journalists to seek out sources, including documentary to report to the public on the activities of the government. The United States must not pursue an unnecessary prosecution that risks criminalizing common journalistic practices and thus chilling the work free press. We urge you to ensure that this case be brought to a to close in a timely manner as possible. And here is the list of people that signed on to it. Sincerely, James P. McGovern, Thomas Massey, Rashida Tlaib, Eric Burleson, Ilhan Omar, Paul A. Gassar, Ayanna Presley, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Pramila Jayapal, Matthew Rosendale, Craig Cesar, Craig Kassar, excuse me, Greg Kassar, not Craig, Corey Bush, Jamal Bauman, Jesus G., uh, Chewy Garcia, Alexander ocasio Tez, and Rand Paul. Look at that. The squad. Shit libs. Democrats working together with libertarians and conservatives to do what's right. Tati, I'm out of breath. Do you have any opinions about what was said? And do you think, honestly, it was a little bit too late? 
Uh, I think that this country's been off the rails for a long time. I mean, look at the election itself, right? We've known for a long time that something funny went on and there's basically no restitution. This is just another example of like a flaming glaring error that's been ongoing for the U.S. for a long time. I do think that there's been um, pushback, maybe not in a formal way from Congress and the Senate. Um, but I mean, everybody's known for a long time that this is uh, that this is going on and that it's blatantly wrong. I mean, to mention their relationships being damaged with Australia. Since when does Australia care about Assange in the first place? I, I haven't seen them stepping up to the plate. Um, so, I mean, I think that um, I have very, very little respect for anybody that's in Washington or for that process overall. That being said, uh, good on these uh, politicians for adding their voice to it. I think it was a well-worded letter. I think that it's been an embarrassment that it's been going on this long. So I just added on to this list of things that seem to go unpunished. I mean, there's so much corruption that I'm not sure that anybody's even really trying to hide it anymore. Um, because I, I mean, it's almost like a fire sale. Everybody's just grabbing everything that they can from a collapsing empire. Mm -hmm. I hope that that's not true. Um, I saw this Robbie Salve, um, or Starbucks or whatever. The, he had this movie recently about like, you know, the pedos invading the schools and stuff like that. And at the beginning, there's this version of America, um, the, be the beautiful or whatever. And it's so spooky and so sad. And it really kind of scared me because I realized, wow, like we are actually watching um, a very, very dire moment. And if you're somebody who's been awake for a very long time, you know, I've known about weirdo stuff for, I don't know, since like 2001, kind of 2002. Um, it's almost like passe. You're like, oh yeah, you know, they're falling apart. This is falling apart. But at the same time, there are real, uh, real people whose lives are being ruined, even though one may feel, I guess, numb. And, and and that's what I would say a little bit when I think about this Assange situation is that it's been so mm -hmm. horrific and so ongoing that I feel mm -hmm. a little bit like mm, not so hopeful. Although, you know, as long as we have, uh, re you know, as long as we're alive, we have reason to hope, right? Um, yes. Russell said that to me from prison, from like a double life sentence. So if that guy can be optimistic, I think that we, we all need to, we owe it to the situation to remain so. But I mean, as far as I can tell, UK government's a bunch of scumbags, US government's a bunch of scumbags, courts are all corrupt. Like, I'm not that hopeful. And no, I don't no. know what people should do in order to fix it. But this was a good start. I, I'm not, I'm not mad that they didn't write it fast enough for certain people. I mean, give me a break, whatever. People are just looking to complain. Better late than never. I'm the same way as you right now. I'm not that hopeful. People said, why don't you cover Assange as much as you used to? Because I feel like they're never going to let him go. They're slowly torturing him, and it's depressing. Uh, that's not an excuse to not to stop talking about the, you know, Julian Assange. We should always be screaming about Julian Assange, but it does. It makes me lose hope at times because you know there's never repercussions for anybody in the United States government. Nobody ever pays a price. And I'm not a Donald Trump fan, but the way they're kind of going after him now, you know, these double standards, how hypocritical they can be. I mean, Joe Biden for crying out loud, you know, he's been for every single goddamn war out there and what they did, you know, the Hunter Biden situation is just ridiculous. Uh, by the way, our guy Derek Bros is here and he's here a little bit early. So why don't we jump him in really quickly just so he can say hi and he can finish up the segment with us because he's great on this stuff. And I know he's got a lot to say. Uh, let's bring in Derek Bros, ladies and gentlemen. He's here with us today. Derek, what's up, buddy? Am I early? I thought it was late. <laughs> we're late what's up we're Tatiana <laughs> hey Derek long time no see man how are you I'm doing well good to see you good, cool. Tatiana Moroz Derek Bros we're here hanging out any thoughts on today about Julian Assange we'd like you to fi finish the segment with us we got a few videos but we'd love to get your your analysis on what you think is going on yeah sure so I mean first off thank you both for feeling the need and the you know the effort to shine a light on this story because 
it, as you guys were just saying, more people need to be talking about it. Right now, everybody's talking about it, and that's a good thing. But as we know, these things tend to get like a lot of attention at once, and then it sort of subsides, and people forget, oh, wait, Assange is still rotting away, and all the implications of that. So, you know, I, I pretty much just would echo the same things you guys have already shared. I will say I'm proud that uh, in addition to the folks you guys mentioned, that Taylor Hudak, who works with Last American Vagabond, who I work with, she was there reporting today from the courtroom, and she'll be there tomorrow. She's been like posting on her telegram channel from within the courtroom. So I'm glad there's independent media there. Yeah, no doubt. If we don't do it, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but uh, MSNBC and CNN and, uh, you know, uh, Newsmax and Fox News, they're not talking about uh, Julian Assange. They are screaming about Alexei Navalny, but they're not talking about Julian and Assange. It's, it's pretty sad. Uh, one guy who's always talked about Julian Assange is Jeremy Corbyn. He's never shut up about it, and I love Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, let's play a video from Jeremy Corbyn and see what he had to say today uh, as he was outside the courthouse with all, all those other people we know. And can I just start by saying thank you to every single person that's here this morning. We sent a call out saying be outside the Royal Courts of Justice this morning to show your support for Julian Assange. And I hope on this occasion, the British media have turned up as well, because uh, it's been markedly obvious how great the reporting has been all around the world of the appalling injustice that's been done to Julian and how little the British media have covered it. It's a story right on their doorsteps. But I guess for the British establishment, the whole question of Julian Assange is just a little bit embarrassing. And so I think we should also say a huge thank you to the steadfastness of all those that have organized the campaign for Julian, and in particular, our love and solidarity to Stella for the work that she's put in and the obvious stress and strain that she has been under. Now, Julian is currently in Belmarsh Prison, which is a maximum security prison. It is an awful place. It is awful conditions. It's not the kind of prison that should exist anywhere. I want prisons to be supportive, corrective and reformative, not punishing and destroying of people's characters and lives. And before that, he was in uh, exile in the Ecuadorian embassy, and I think we should say thank you to that government of Ecuador that was prepared to support Julian. And then you ask yourself the question, why was it they were prepared to stick their necks out so far and support Julian? It was because he was telling the truth about what was going on around the world. He was telling the truth about the US involvement in Afghanistan and Iraq, he was also telling the truth about corporate greed and corruption around the world, stealing the resources from the poorest countries and the poorest people in the world. He was telling the truth about the corruption in the way in which our media conspires with governments and uh, the military to hide the truth about the horrors of war. And when we held an event in solidarity with Julian in the National Press Club in Washington, we held it in exactly the same place where the film was exposed, where an order was given, a direct order was given by the US military to kill civilians on the street in Iraq during the Iraq war. If only Julian were alive in reality in front of us, alive to give the reporting rather than being stuck in that horrible cell in Belmarsh, what would he be saying? What would he be saying? about the bombardment of Rafa and all the destruction of life all across the Gaza Strip. What would he be saying about the highly sophisticated, highly sophisticated weaponry that is being used and has so far taken the lives of almost 30,000 Palestinian people? We need that strength, that skill, that determination of Julian Assange to get to the truth around the world. He is a real journalist. Real journalists take risks. Real journalists go for the truth, whatever the cost. That has cost the lives of 80 journalists in Gaza already and in many other conflicts around the world. What we need is Julian's voice to be out there. So the idea that Julian should be prosecuted 
under the Espionage Act in the United States, the same legislation that was used against Daniel Ellsberg and others that tried to bring truth to the US body politic is beyond appalling. So this court today has an opportunity, an opportunity to ensure that Julian's case is heard, that Julian's search for justice is achieved, and that ultimately Julian is able to walk free. But it also depends on the political process and atmosphere in the United States. President Biden could end this incarceration in two minutes. He could withdraw the whole case against Julian Assange if he believes in press freedom, as he says he does, if he believes in a pluralistic democracy, as he says he does, then let Julian go, let Julian tell the world the truth of the horrors and inequality that exist on this planet. So we're here today in support of Julian. We're here tomorrow in support of Julian. And I say to the court very gently and very persuasively, whatever, whatever your decision, we ain't going away. We are supporting Julian as long as it takes. And a huge thank you to all those people all around the world that have spoken up and said so much in support of Julian. And let's be of good strength, of total determination, that we will ensure that Julian Assange is freed to tell the truth and help to bring about that decent, more equal, more sustainable, more peaceful planet. Thank you, Julian, for all you've done, and thank you for all you will do. Thank you very much. So awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the show today. This is Pasta to Go. We're going to end that segment right there. We're going to come back at the very end of the show and pick it back up and talk about Julian Assange and what's been happening today. Uh, it's his last chance. I mean, there is a human rights court he can appeal to one time. Stella Assange, ladies and gentlemen, showed on up as well. I mean, she's showed up. She's never left. She's been there from the get-go. Uh, our Polish Lisa Loeb, uh, Tatiana Moroz, told us that she thought it was so romantic. It was a kind of a love story, the way she's sticking by right now by Julian's side. Um, this is what she had to say today about what's going on. Remember, this is Julian Assange, potentially his last chance right here. If he loses this case today, ladies and gentlemen, he gets sent to the United States. He's extradited where he'll surely be locked up for life and they will slowly torture him there, even worse than they're torturing him in Omar prison. And this is the first journalist slash publisher to ever be tried uh, under the Espionage Act, which means they can redefine the way investigative journalism is handled. In other words, they can always make it a crime. And it's not just about journalism in the press. It's you, the people. Remember, they're not coming after Julian. They're coming after all of us, and they're using Julian to get to us. So they can take away our voice. They take away our life. That's the last line of defense. It's everything this country stands for right now, they're pissing on it. So we have to raise our voices and stop them. Stella, everybody. because uh, it's only a handful of us inside the room that actually can follow the proceedings. So I wanted to tell you about what was going on in there. Uh, we opened and uh, we talked about Julian's political opinions and his political motivations. And they are clear and they're unchallenged, which is to expose state criminality. And what happens when you expose state criminality? The United States has taken a political, politically motivated prosecution against a journalist because he exposed them committing crimes. And so what's going on inside this courtroom is to determine how the extent of the cover-up How is this court going to deal with this case? We heard that the case was only brought after the United States said uh, that it would do anything to prevent the International Criminal Court from examining an investigation into uh, US activities in Afghanistan and of course, WikiLeaks evidence um, in the publication that Julian's indicted over are part of that case. 
WikiLeaks has been used as evidence in uh, the European Court of Human Rights and other foreign courts to expose state criminality. And the United States is abusing its legal system in order to hound and prosecute and intimidate all of you. What's at stake is the ability to publish the truth and expose crimes when they're committed by states. The outcome of this hearing today will make it clear the extent of the cover-up. The only fair I shouldn't even talk about fairness at this stage because the country that's trying to extradite him plotted to murder him. What are we even entertaining in these courts? How can any um, how can you how can you even entertain? This hearing, knowing what we know, it's all on the public record. And yet it continues. It's only a handful of us in that room, but you know what the stakes are. You understand what this is about. It's about you, it's about us, it's about the public's right to know. It's about the right to be able to speak freely without being put in prison and hounded and terrorized by the state. Thank you. You know, I think that collateral murder, which was the video where they showed U.S. personnel mowing down ter uh, journalist, journalist in Iraq that were carrying a camera and they said that they thought it was a gun. They knew that going on. I think that kind of highlighted what happens every day in those countries when the U.S. military is there, when the empire is there. They shoot first, ask questions later. But I don't think it was as, as hardly as damaging as the Vault 7 stuff, right? Like, And all the stuff that was like that. Pretty much it's very significant when a lot of the crimes and stuff were exposed about what the CIA and the deep state has, the tools they have to listen to us. Even when computers are not on, if there's a gateway, they can listen to you. So all, when it exposed all these spying powers, things got worse. And now it's just a free-for-all. And at the end of the day, when they go after Julian Assange, it's not about what he did. It's about the pot potential of what all of us can do or can continue to do and how we can learn from Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Never got a story wrong, by the way. Unlike, you know, MSNBC and CNN that even though they should, would should have to retract so many stories for getting it wrong all the time. A couple more videos really quickly. Uh, extraordinary support at court in London for day X. Uh, this is what it looked like when I walked out when we broke for lunch. Tomorrow, after day two of arguments, we will march from the court to down. You got a quick video here? We also have one more video from the bridge. Let's check this next one out, too, as well. Great crowd. Way to go, everybody. Who everybody brought their butts down there. Awesome. Jamie, you got one more? Where's this one at, Jamie? This is London Bridge, I believe. I mean, they've actually got it on the the bridge is actually promoting uh, what they need to do to free Assange. 
It's awesome. And you can see the... I'll go full screen on this. So you can see the uh, the scroll up there. Yeah, That's Julian Assange. Yeah. There is no free press without a free Julian Assange. Means so much. Symbolic, man. You know what I'm saying? This is not just about... I know, like I said, there's people who get mad because I won't bring up Omiya Abu Jabal. Abu Jamal as much, or Leonard Peltier, or any other political prisoner. And it's not that I don't think that they're, you know, uh, as important. This is something very unique where they're using the espionage, uh, the espionage act to go after them, and, and by doing that, they can redefine what journalism is, and they can define it as a crime anytime they want. Like Stella has said, the state, the state can come after you whenever they want now. If they get, if they're able to get Julian Assange, so this is my good buddy uh, Gordon Dick, who's who's on the morning show plenty of times. Love Gordon. <laughs> I wouldn't even call it a kangaroo court because it's an insult to kangaroos, is what he would say. Describes how bizarre conditions are inside, made it almost impossible to report on the proceedings. Uh, they're turning out the lights on democracy here, and this is by due dissonance. And Russell went to. Uh, London, big ups to Russell, man. He's getting his boots on the ground, too, as well. Keaton, you better get your ass up and go some places, man. Me and Russell, we're, we're in Jimmy Dore. We're going over here, over there. What are you doing? You're hanging out in New York drinking tea. Listen to Gordon and Russell. Check it out. My name's Gordon Dillick. I'm an independent journalist from the UK, and I'll be covering this for, well, the last five or six years. Okay. Were you in the courtroom? I was in the courtroom this morning. It was shambolic. How so? Well, they've got the courtroom set up. This is the World Court of Justice, so there's going to be some rather large courts in there. So they put it in what I can only imagine is the smallest court that they've got with only 12 seats in the gallery. That's what I heard. So you've got... Now, now, you know, why, now why did they do that? Just... Exactly. Why would they do that? This is the greatest case of press freedom ever, right. as far right. as I'm concerned, and they you know, turning out the lights on democracy here. So they put it in a room with 12 people and then they put an additional court with seating for about 30 to 40 people and that's where the journalists are going. And they've got two screens so we can watch proceedings. The only trouble is you can't hear the goddamn thing. This is what I'm hearing, that there's no volume. You can't hear a word. You, you get the occasional word and then the, then the, the audio goes out and then comes in. But it gets worse than that, Russell, because... At one stage, the feed cut out totally for about 60 seconds. And I was putting an update to my Telegram channel that the feed just cut out, and then it came back on. And then the feed cut, and I'm not making this up, but you heard a toilet brush over the audio, clear as day, and then you saw a guy on his phone sit down somewhere. It looked like the feed had got crossed with another person who was sitting on a toilet somewhere in the world court and waiting to hear from somebody else who's in the room to make sure that they saw what I saw. Uh -huh. We all laughed when it happened. We all laughed, even the guys who were doing the feed at the front laughed. And then all of a sudden it went off again and it went back to proceedings where you couldn't hear anything. It was literally the only thing I heard was this toilet flush and this guy sit down like he was sitting on the toilet and then the feed went off. And then it went back to them babbling about, you know, the case where you couldn't hear anything. Largest case of press freedom ever. And they're literally not allowing the journalists to hear what is going on. So I right. ask so, him, just so I make sure I have this right. right so on, My partner's asking a question. Go ahead. Yeah, so at, just make sure I have this right. So there's 12 seats in the courtroom and then everybody else is relying upon a feed that they can't hear? Uh, all, all right. So to clarify. There's 12 seats in the courtroom, and seats. everyone else is relying on a feed that no one can hear. That's correct. And all of the journalists are in the other room relying on that feed, so they can't hear what's going on. It's almost like they so don't want to So basically 12 people recovery. can hear this in real time. With your conspiracy theories for saying that, I hope you realize that. Doesn't surprise me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for today. You can see the shenanigans they're, they're, they're doing over there in London. I hope tomorrow is a little bit better. 12 sits in one room. Everybody else got to go to the other two rooms. TV screens, you can't see shit. You know, it's like those old school scenes when they used to try to watch the horse races in the small bars in Long Island. You can barely see anything, man. It was terrible. 
But the, the, no uh, the games they're going to play over there, you know, you you play shit games, you win shit prizes, Mr. Lund there, King. There is no way they're not doing that on purpose. Absolutely. They, 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 they have got so much to hide. They do not want anybody to know how they're trying to railroad J- Julian Assange. Yeah. And it's it, this is a travesty of justice. It's just it's a we're, we're just we're ruled by evil people. So we I mean, are. this is just like it's just, this is going to go down in history as like one of the worst persecutions ever. So. It is. You know, they they want to make sure that he dies in prison. That's what they want. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah, saying? they want to. It's, it's, a, it's a slow him. murder. We're it's watching it. them kill him in slow motion. It, it's not because they just hate him, too, as well. It's because they want to make sure they send a signal to all of us out there that we don't get any ideas to report on them. I mean, look what they're doing to independent media journalists like ourselves who just report on the truth. We've been demonetized for so many years on on the convo couch. They're still pulling feeds. The other day when we had a halfway decent feed, they were pulling the Vladimir Putin Tucker Carlson interview. Why? Because information is the most important valuable currency right now out there. It's more valuable than anything else. The greatest threat to the empire is its own citizens. So if they silence us, they silence everybody. They silence the narrative. And they get to do exactly what they do. And that's to be bloody, murderous, leeching bastards and steal up all the resources and take them for themselves and deem us into hell to, to be what we are, useless eaters.